Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build and define a renewals process in HubSpot. Defining a renewals process in HubSpot is a great way to increase team visibility, make sure that everybody knows what's happening with customers to prepare them for a renewal, and also give you a way to track and report on revenue, which you're capturing post the initial sale, which typically is somewhere in the range of 70 to 80% of total revenue for a customer. So the first thing that we're going to do in this process is create a dedicated renewals pipeline. So here I am using HubSpot deals, and I've laid out my pipeline in stages based on the time until the renewal date. So we have six to 12 months, three to six months, two to three months out, one month out, and then as you would expect in a sales pipeline, closed one and closed last. We are displaying some properties specific to renewals on the cards here. So we have the amount of the renewal, the expected close date or the renewal date, the owner of the renewal deal, and a health score to help identify accounts that might be more or less likely and in need of more attention when they get to that renewal point. So once we have this pipeline mapped out, the thing to mention here is we are also including required fields for moving a renewal deal to closed one. This is going to make sure that we are capturing and have values for important information like the amount of the renewal and the close date of the renewal. Because as we'll talk about in just a second, we're going to use those values to automate our process here and create new deals with the correct information. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how are we going to get renewal deals into this pipeline? Probably using a separate pipeline for your initial sales. So how do we get deals here? How do we make that a little bit easier with a workflow? So this first workflow that we're going to look at is moving closed one deals to onboarding and renewal pipelines. We're going to focus on the renewal pipeline part here. So we're going to trigger this workflow when the deal stage is closed one in our sales pipeline. We have this check here, which is just an if that then branch, which is going to make sure that we have all the information that we need to go on and copy to the new deal. So that's just an if then that checks that the data for persona, success metrics, migration required, deal owner, and amount is known. And then if it is not, we're pushing this back into our sales pipeline, sending an internal email notification to make sure that we're going and capturing that information. I would strongly recommend also making those fields required fields in your sales pipeline to move the deal to closed one. If all that data is available, we're going to go ahead and create a new record in our renewals pipeline. So we're going to create a new deal. We're going to assign it to the existing owner. You could also rotate this to a team in a separate action if you wanted to. If you have a separate account management team, maybe that is managing ongoing renewals beyond the point of first sale, we are going to make the deal name be renewal for, use the personalization deal token for the current deal name, and then add hyphen year one at the end. You'll see why when we get to the next step for creating subsequent deals. We're going to add that to the six to 12 month stage in our renewal pipeline. We're assuming annual renewals here. You could modify that or move to a different stage depending on if this is a monthly or annual renewal, you could put that in a branch as well. And because this is an annual renewal, we're setting the close date for 365 days from today. And then we are adding this renewal year property, which again, we will talk about in a later workflow, but for now, we're just sending it to one. This is going to be the first time that this deal is renewal or is renewing because it is coming out of our sales pipeline. After that, we're going to copy over any important information that we need for the renewal. And finally here, we're just going to associate everything that has happened with the sales deal with the renewal deal. So we have contacts, companies, tickets, quotes, everything that's there is available and accessible when it comes time to work on that renewal deal. So beyond that, you can add, of course, any other actions that you need in your handoff or in your internal process when a deal moves to close one. So we have things like creating an onboarding ticket, sending internal notifications. But for our purposes, creating the renewal deal is the most important part. Okay, next up, let's go back to our renewal pipeline really quick. As we mentioned, we're breaking this up into stages based on how far away the renewal date is. So one thing that we can do is use a workflow to automate the progression of deals through the renewal pipeline based on the time until the renewal. So if I go to this workflow over here, we can move the deals based on time to renewal. And to do that, we are going to use an enrollment trigger of days to renewal is known. This is a calculated property, which is taking the renewal date minus today's date 
to give a number of days until that renewal and then making sure that we are only running this when we are looking at deals that are in our renewal pipeline. I have a separate video and there's a separate resource on creating a today's date property and creating that calculated days to renewal property, uh, which I will link in this video as well. We also want to make sure that we have re-enrollment turned on because of course there are multiple stages in our renewal pipeline and we want to make sure that the deal can move through all of them. Once we have that trigger, we're then going to look at some simple logic here that is just gonna say, basically how many days are there until renewal? And based on that, put each deal in a bucket, which is gonna represent the stage that it should be in. So six to 12 months, less than 182 days until renewal, three to six, between 182 and 90, two to three, 90 and 30, and then one month less than or equal to 30. So once we have those branches broken out by our if then, action, we're just going to set the corresponding deal and pipeline stage to match the branch. So for six to 12, we're going to set the deal property pipeline stage to six to 12 months in our renewal pipeline and so on and so forth. We'll just make sure that if for some reason we have a days to renewal, which isn't in a range that we expect, we just catch that and say that we have missing criteria here. We'll create a task assigned to the deal owner to go and figure out what's happening. This is a good way to catch that and make sure that we have all the data, the data is what we expect, and as such, we're taking the appropriate next step. So once we have all of this, we now have deals moving automatically through our renewal pipeline and based on the days to renewal. The thing that we haven't talked about yet is what happens after the first year. Once a deal renews for the first time, how do we go back and create a deal for year two, year three, year four, so on and so forth. To do that, we are going to create subsequent deals in another workflow. And so we're going to use the enrollment trigger here of the deal is closed one, but this time in our renewal pipeline. Once we have that, we're going to create a new deal in the same pipeline. We're going to assign it to the existing owner, we're going to set their name. We are going to put it back in that six to 12 months pipeline stage. Again, set 365 days, copy over the important information, make all the associations that we did before. And that's where the interesting part happens here. So now we've created a new deal, but it doesn't really have any distinguishing information to set it aside from anything else. So what we want to do is to use that renewal year property to create a dynamic name based on the year of the renewal. So first, we're just going to check that that property exists. If it doesn't exist, we'll set it to one. We'll assume that something went wrong when it was coming over from the sales pipeline, and then we'll continue with the workflow. One thing to note here is that we're using this format data action, which is something that is available only in Operations Hub with HubSpot. There are some other ways to do this, which I can link to as well using Zapier, or you could make a renewal year a required property in your renewal pipeline and just update the name manually. But let's assume that you have Ops Hub and we can continue with this workflow. So we're gonna use this format data property to take the renewal year, which is a number, and we're just gonna add one. We're gonna increment the value of that year. So when it came over from our sales pipeline, the value was one. When it moves to this year two renewal, it will create a new deal there. We're just gonna increment it to two. So once we have that value, we're gonna copy the value which came out of that calculation in the format data property into the property renewal year. So we have it available. Then we're gonna use another format data action to cut the numeric characters off the end of our deal name. So here we're just specifying zero through nine as characters to cut and we're gonna output a string. We're going to copy that string value to deal name. And then we are going to set the deal name to be a combination of the deal name without that numeric year number at the end and the new renewal year value, which we have set. So in this case, it'd be renewal for company name hyphen year, and then renewal year would be two if it was the second year renewal as updated by our previous action. And then finally, we are going to, as we'll talk about in the next step, we're just gonna take the amount and the renewal date, the new close date for this deal, and copy it onto the company record, which if we go to the 
company record for this still this workflow company you'll see that on the left hand side we have renewal date specified renewal amount specified called out and prioritizing this customer success section in the left hand sidebar and then on the right hand side we have all the associated deals so we have the original sales deal we have the renewal for year one and we have the renewal for year two this one is closed and this one is the one that's in progress this is just kicked off and won't be closing for almost another year but putting everything that is happening in our renewal pipeline putting the most important information the high level associations back in the company record helps give everybody visibility into what's happening with a specific account so they can help and be a part of ensuring that customer renews without them having to necessarily go and dig into a renewal pipeline or any individual deals that might be associated with that company. As we've laid out here, using a separate dedicated pipeline for renewals is a great way to manage the process, make sure that you're able to see what deals are upcoming for renewal, what are the amounts, what is the progression? You can also add reporting on top of this based on that renewal year property to see, you know, did they initially close at $8,000? They've gr since grown to $20,000 or have they shrunk in account value over some period of time? But hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and we'd love to hear what you think. Thanks.